given that we as a society have decided that R. Kelly shit is just not ethical. It's not legal. It's not ethical. You ain't supposed to do it. Um, I'm trying to understand, you know, why we look at this as, you know, as this is sort of, you know, just what one guy doing something very bad to a bunch of young women and that none of us have anything to do with that. Um, I think that many of us as a society, as a culture, I think that we enable a lot of what we're condemning when it comes to the R. Kelly situation. And let me explain to you why. Um, first things first, uh, let's just being fair and laying everything into context. We all know about R. Kelly's history. We know, or many of you know, if you don't know, you should know. He was molested as a child, right? Now we might think, oh, well, he's a boy. He got molested. Who cares? It's not a big deal. No, 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 no. A boy being molested, you know, it does affect him. Uh, in a different way, but it does affect them the same way we have the sympathy for a girl that gets molested and we kind of, whatever crazy thing she does when she's an adult, we say, oh, she was molested and that excuses it. Well, with R. Kelly, you can't excuse it because he's technically hurting people. But remember, Vanessa Williams, who was a former uh, Miss America, uh, you know, she was molested and she used that as her justification for a lot of things she did when she got older, a real, lot of real raunchy shit that she did, right? Uh, and so, you know, let's just be clear. So, so that that just should be laid on the table. I'm not saying it justifies it, uh, because if you if you let people off the hook for molestation because they were molested, then you might as well just open prison gates and let you know 10,000 people out right now. Because a lot of the people who are in prison for doing something like that, somebody did that to them, right? Hurt people tend to hurt people. We know that, right? There's a lot of um, pedophilia that happens. Uh, I think a lot of a lot of the I feel I have a, my heart goes out to uh, young black boys who are gay as well, because there's a ton of pedophilia that happens there. Nobody really talks about it because they want to say that you're being homophobic when you bring it up. But a lot of these young boys, they get their first sexual experience from some 42 year old man who happens to like the 16, 15, 14 year old, right? Um, I think that's why, uh, you know, even in these fashion shows, the models, they want the models to be anorexic skinny. They don't want them to have curves. They want them to have the bodies of little 11, 12 year old boys. I think there's a reason for that. I don't think that that's a coincidence. Okay. So, so, you know, so let's just be clear. You know, this is, this, this sort of thing is not a, just a black thing. It's not just a R. Kelly thing. It's not just a, a heterosexual thing. Uh, it's also, it, it could also be a gay thing. It's an international thing happens all the time. Uh, in fact, uh, we always make a joke, like if you if you date a man and he spends a whole lot of time in Thailand or whatever, and that's just where he loves to be, you might want to go with him on a couple of those trips just to make sure he ain't, you know, getting involved in some some bullshit, because that's kind of where a lot of that shit goes down. Um, so uh, that that's the first thing that, that must be laid on the table that we know that this comes in the context. There was something someone cre helped to create this R. Kelly. Someone created that. Second thing is. Um, I find it fascinating when we have people that I've seen people online that'll say, if you're one of these fools who's blaming the parents for what happened with R. Kelly, then you need to shut up and you don't care about our girls and blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, hmm. So you're telling me that the parents have nothing to do with any of this. You're telling me that, that, that we should just pretend like parents don't play a part in the choices of our daughters, that parents don't play a part in uh, the exposure of our daughters to predators. You tell me parents don't matter. Uh, I now I understand you're trying to keep the focus on R. Kelly, which I think you can. And most people can't walk and chew gum at the same time in this society. I think I think we have a dumbed down society. So people think you must either blame R. Kelly or you must either or you must blame the parents. So the people that don't want R. Kelly to get the blame will say blame the parents. And then the people that don't want the parents, anybody else, they want to make sure R. Kelly gets the blame. They're like, forget the parents. It's R. Kelly. No, how about it's R. Kelly and the parents? How about, how about this? How about we talk about the truth and accept the reality that a lot of these kids, a lot of these young ladies were dating R. Kelly because their mama and daddy were down with that. Go look on the internet. I'm not even gonna get into the innuendos or whatever about the situation with Aaliyah and Aaliyah's mama and all this other stuff. But let me tell you this, let me explain this to you. Look, there's a lot of um, situations that uh, that I've seen and, and heard about and talked to people about where a guy might want to get with a young girl and he might, you know, charm the pants off the mama and the daughter at the same damn time. A lot of times, did you know, I know cops who have worked with uh, children who have um, done, who have investigated crimes against children and go ask any cop. Don't believe me. Don't take my word for it. Go talk to any cop who's invested, th investigated things like child molestation. <clears throat> I want you to ask the cops. 
ask the cops a few basic questions that are politically incorrect, but just saying this, say, um, do you think a child's more likely to be molested if they have a father in the home or if they don't have a father in the home? Ask the cop what they say. Ask them what they think. I bet you they're going to say, yeah, when the father's around, it's a lot harder for the molester to get access to the kids. Um, then ask the father, um, so, so, or ask, ask the cop, I'm sorry, ask the cop. So when a little girl, 16 year old girl is getting, is dating an older man, um, you know, do, uh, does the, the molester sometimes maybe have some sort of relationship with the mother? Like maybe he's dating the mom and, and that, and, and maybe he's having sex with the mom while she's at, or assuming with the daughter while the mom's at work. Like, does that ever happen? Have you ever seen a situation like that? And I bet you they're going to say, yeah, we see that all the time. And the mother has no idea because she's so in love with this guy. She can't imagine that this man might be, um, you know, looking at her daughter. Right. And so the reality is that when you're talking about an R. Kelly situation to me, this is me just being real, 100 percent real. This is why this is a conversation you ain't going to have. You're not going to see these conversations on mainstream TV. You're not going to see white people have these conversations because they don't know. They, they're so busy being politically correct that they end up being incorrect. Right. I don't care about being politically correct. I just want to be correct. I don't give a fuck if you are offended by what I say. I'm looking for the truth here. Um, uh, you know, I'm going to tell you this. You know, when I see situations like that, I see scenarios where uh, in some cases the parents and the child and the girl have all agreed that this is something that they want, that maybe because they have raised their daughter to believe that he should want they should, that she should want to be with a baller. And she brings home this 27 year old baller. Don't matter if he's a dope dealer, womanizer, whatever, over age, under age, whatever. The, the, the parents sometimes are like, oh, that's great. She has a good boyfriend who's putting food on the table, who's bringing money into the house. Or she, look at that. She's dating a famous man. Oh, my goodness. That is so great. She's dating a famous man. And and here's so because the reason that that's important to understand is let's just be let's be real. All of y'all, some of y'all, if you got a child, if you have a child, let me know if you have a child. Tell me, do you think that it would be easy for your child to be in a relationship with R. Kelly? Like, do you think that that would just randomly happen? Like, do you think that you would would just see your child dating an R. Kelly and be like, oh my goodness, she got a, she is a nice boy. He's nice and handsome and famous and he can sing. Like, do you really think that would happen? No, you wouldn't. You'd be like, hell no, get that motherfucker out of my house, right? And, and so this is where the conversations get loopy because people want to act like this can just happen to anybody that you know that that any family that any family anybody with a daughter can end up in this situation r kelly can hurt anybody no 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 there are people there are ways there are choices you might make that make yourself and your family more vulnerable to the predators that are out here and because we live in a, in a society that's focused more on political correctness than on correctness and safety Right. We have people that don't want to talk about the preventative measures you can take to try to make sure your children are not in the line of sight of an R. Kelly. Because I'm going to tell you right now, I bet you that if you were to do a survey on all the young ladies, all the young 16 year olds that R. Kelly got with and said, hey, what percentage of these young girls had a strong father in the home? What percentage of these 16 year old girls had a had a, a Boyce Watkins type of man in the house? who won't take none of that bullshit. How, what percentage of these girls had a father in the home who will bust you upside your head if you try to touch his daughter? I bet you the percentage is probably close to zero. Probably close to zero. They probably either had no father or a weak father. But, but here's the problem. You got people out here telling you that black fathers don't matter, that black dads don't matter. Go to the Black Lives Matter website. If you go, to, when I went to blacklivesmatter.org, everything was about women and LGBT and feminism and gay rights and all that. They didn't mention nothing about black men, nothing about black, black, about black fathers, none of that. None of, nothing about the relevance of the black male and how mass incarceration by taking the black men out of the household made our children vulnerable to the predators that exist in our community. Nobody talks about that. Everybody wants to react, but nobody wants to prevent. Everybody wants to react, but nobody wants to prevent. The same people that want you to get outraged about an R. Kelly are the same ones who will get outraged because I made this motherfucking video. The same people who want you pissed off about what R. Kelly did, and you should be. Absolutely. Be mad at that guy. I ain't want, I, his music has disgusted me since 2002. 
Okay, the same people who want you outraged about R. Kelly are the same ones who are going to turn around and say Dr. Boyce is a sexist because he said that fathers that 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 with their children need their fathers and that and that that he's attacking single moms because he's saying that fathers need to be in the house. You goddamn right they need to be in the house. The same way children need their mothers, children also need their fathers, and the R. Kelly incidents are an example of that. Think about it. Go back to look at TV. Black people love entertainment. Let's talk about good times. Remember good times? Well, good times anytime you need a payment. Good time. Right? Thelma was 16, 17, looking fine as, as fine as wine. And she had a strong father in the household. What did that mean? Can, so can you imagine an R. Kelly getting a hold of Thelma? What would happen if an R. Kelly tried to date a Thelma and get in her pants at the age of 16? She would be dead by the end of the episode, right? Right? She she wouldn't, you know, he would, he would not, she would be dead. He would be dead, right? He wouldn't make it to next week, right? So the point on, on, on this is that, you know, we cannot disconnect the prevalence of the R. Kelly's in our communities, and there are thousands of them. We cannot disconnect this from our lost commitment to what it takes to create strong families and to keep them together. We cannot disconnect the two. You know, we love to do what white people do. And so when white people started getting more divorces, we did too. Well, why? Well, because you complain about every damn thing. You want, you want to believe that the black man is flawed just because he's breathing, that, that everything about him, every, every, every bone in his body is filled with toxic masculinity and that everything he does that reflects uh, masculine behavior must somehow be, uh, be, be dysfunctional and, and, and abusive and terrible. And, and, and I resent that. I resent that because these same people that you want to talk about having this toxic masculinity are the same ones who will break a dude's neck for trying to touch your 16 year old daughter. He, he would catch it. He would see it from a mile away. When the R. Kelly's come in, here's what they do. They, they charm the mothers. They, they tell them how beautiful they are. Maybe they even having sex with the mamas and, and, and they, they, the mama's inviting them over for dinner. And, and, and next thing you know, your, your child's being victimized when you ain't looking because he, you, he charmed you. He charmed your pants off. Maybe, li maybe even literally charmed your pants off. But a father would catch all of that. A father, a strong father would be like, no, what, why are you here? What do you want with my daughter? I, I tell you, I, I had, um, there was a young lady I worked with who was an intern of mine about maybe a decade ago. She was about, she was about 18 at the time. And I remember that I, I was going to hire her for a job, and I did hire her. She was very, very good. She was a very good team member uh, that I worked with. And I called her house, and I said, um, I said, is she available? I, I'm not going to say her name because I don't want to, you know, put on blast. But I called, and I was like, let's, let's call her Felicia. I said, is Felicia available? And the first thing her father said is, what do you want with my daughter? Right. What do you want with my daughter? And that's what and, and that's exactly what every household needs. If there's not somebody there.